Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to do a shabby chic video uh, because I have some small items that I need to uh, get ready to fit into some of the vignettes. And I was gifted this perfume bottle and I just love it, uh, but the gold is a little mu much for me and there's really nothing that I can work it into in the shop. So I'm gonna paint this in the color T-Rose and uh, I'm gonna paint it on the inside and out, just this lid uh, and I'm being careful not to get it on that little glass dabber that is inside. I guess this is like a perfume bottle and um, I'm not real sure what that's for. If you guys know what it's for, let me know. Um, but it looks like maybe it sticks into the bottle and you dab it on, except that this piece here on the bottom gets in the way of dabbing it on. So I'm not sure at all, but it's very pretty. And I'm just gonna leave the glass, the clear glass. And once this is dry, then I'm gonna uh, go over it with some uh, gold gilding wax. And I'll just take my finger and kind of rub it around, uh, across all of the high spots. And that's all that I'm going to do to this, except finish it off with a clear coat. And I was also gifted this little perfume bottle, and I'm pretty sure this one is Avon, uh, but I'm gonna do the reverse on this one, actually. I'm gonna paint the bottle only and not paint the little uh, stopper on the top. And uh, then I'll let this dry well, and I'll take some of that same gold gilding wax and rub it across the high spots on this one. And then again, I'll finish this off with a clear coat and this one will be finished. And then this one is a new bottle that uh, the Dollar Tree started carrying. So um, I'm gonna paint this one and leave the stopper, the, the crystal color, and or the clear. And I'm gonna um, let this one dry and rub some of that same gold gilding wax over all this texture. And I'm just gonna kinda lightly do that uh, but before I do that, I decided that I would add some decoupage to this one. So I'm just going to take a napkin and kind of tear some images off of it and decoupage, decoupage that over the top uh, or over the bottle just in places, just kind of randomly here and there. And then let that dry and then go over it with that gilding wax very lightly and then finish that off with a clear coat. Actually, before I added that um, 
gilding wax. Uh, I went over it with some white wax because I felt like the pink in the images that I chose in that napkin that I chose uh, was a little bit too bright to suit me. So I rubbed some uh, white wax over the top of it before I added the gilding wax. And then I finished it off of the clear coat. And I am so sorry for the way I sound today. Honestly, I've had uh, some congestion Thought it was just allergies and ended up going to the doctor and it was an upper respiratory infection. But um, I actually usually sound much worse when I'm getting better. And I do think that I'm getting better. And then once this was finished, I tied some uh, vintage lace around the neck of it and then uh, glued on some little embellishments. And this is a little jewelry box that I was also given. And this little piece on the bottom is loose. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way or not, but I'm gonna be recovering that. And, and then I'm gonna kind of glue it uh, onto the bottom with some hot glue so that it doesn't do that. But that uh, burgundy color is just not something that I like. Uh, so, and I think it needs updating, so I'm going to cover it with some fabric and finish this off with some white wax. So to cover that piece, I cut a circle that is larger than that, and I put that over the top and then glue it around the bottom, and then, um, then I take a circle the size of this circle or slightly smaller and glue that on the bottom and I just have to kind of maneuver with that because to cover it because there's no way of taking it out so you'll see it's uh, I just kind of have to uh, reach down in there and maneuver it it wasn't terribly hard but it was it would have been much easier if I, I could have taken it out but then again once I do that I finish that I go over the gold with some white wax uh, to tone it down and update it. And I had this little miniature teapot, and uh, I'm going to turn it into a little pin cushion uh, that you can store a small sewing kit in. 
Now, if you had a larger teapot, it would probably work even better because you could put more items in it. But this will be good just to put a uh, like a pack of needles and uh, a, a spool of thread and maybe a little thimble or something. This is just kind of, um, I guess, would be a little emergency sewing kit. Uh, but what I did was I, I put some polyfill in the center of a circle and then I stretched uh, it up around that polyfill and tied that off and then cut it off. And now all I'm doing is stuffing it back inside this lid and I'll glue around the edges on the inside and uh, secure it well. But you just have to make sure that you um, that you make your little cushion small enough that it will won't keep the lid from fitting down inside. Now I felt like this needed to be kind of trimmed out a little bit, so uh, I just took some thin uh, lace, and I think I'm using the lace here from the Dollar Tree, and just gluing that around. Um, now, I know I didn't show this one that close up, but I'm going to be doing another pin cushion, so I will show that closer, it, um, how I made the little pouch uh, t for the pin cushion. So, I'm just finishing this off. This is a very, very simple thrift uh, flip. So, I'm just... Uh, uh, that's all that I did was put that in the lid, and now I'm just tying some lace uh, around the handle, and then this one will be finished. So this is something that absolutely anyone can do, especially when you see how I did the little pin cushion on one that I'm going to do later in the video. Okay, so I was looking at Pinterest the other night and came across this idea that I thought was absolutely genius. And uh, so you can take any little item, any container, and turn it into an arrangement. And uh, as you all know, little teacups, uh, you can find them pretty easily. Uh, but it's hard to arrange flowers in them. So um, what they did was they took some air dry clay and they uh, rolled it out thin like this and then uh, cut it to fit the um, top of their container. And then uh, they just took some skewers or whatever you want to use to make holes and just made holes all in this. And so what you're doing is making your own, own frog. So once I cut this out, I just uh, smoothed out those edges. You can kind of dampen your finger to do that. And I'm not worried here about getting it too small. Uh, just don't put a lot of pressure on it because you don't want it falling down in the cup completely. But I'm going to be adding some trim so it will keep that from happening. So I'm going to take one of my trim molds and I think it is a uh, redesign with Prima mold. And I'm going to uh, glue that to the outer edge of this so that this kind of sits down in the cup somewhat especially when it shrinks when your clay dries and it shrinks it's going to be just a little bit smaller so if I didn't add trim it would fall in but I'm going to add that trim around the edge and I'll just use some um, some of the tight bond thick and quick and glue that to the outer edge and what I do is I glue some I put the glue on the very outer edge of this piece and then when I position my trim I put it uh, halfway on and halfway off if that makes sense and then that will keep it from falling down in but what I'm doing is just uh, put, and I, I'm using the back of a little artist brush here and just kind of making the holes all over and you can do any design you want i just wanted several here so that i w wouldn't be limited 
And so you just do the whole thing. And after I do one side, I flip it over and do it on the other side in that same hole just to kind of neaten up the other side. And again, that will, for one thing, neaten up these edges, but also give it a little bit of a lip so that it doesn't fall into your cup. So after I do this, then I'm gonna paint it the color that I want, which I'm using the color T-Rose on this one. And I paint it that color while it's still wet because uh, your clay is less likely to uh, crack if you go ahead and paint it while it's wet. And then once this was dry, then I went over it with some clear finish, and I just used the Dixie Belle uh, clear matte finish on this one, but I felt like it needed to be sealed with something. And now I can take little sprigs from uh, picks that I have, and this is where you can just kind of use just tiny pieces that you have left over. And I made uh, a little arrangement in this. And I just thought that was such a great idea to turn items into little arrangements and, um, and make your frogs to fit whatever container that you want. Okay, this is the other pin cushion that I wanted to show you guys that I wanted to make for you, but I did not record this, and I thought I was recording it, 
and but you just lay that doily on the top and glue it in and that keeps your pin cushion from falling in uh, but I'm, I didn't give up on this. I actually really didn't give up on this because I made a second one so that I could show you guys how to make it uh, again. And again, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. I don't know what my issue was that day. So I went out into one of my sheds and found another creamer that didn't have a lid, which is great for this because you can't do much else with it. Um, I guess you could add one of the little frogs to the top of this one and turn it into an arrangement. But this is how I added the trim. I found a little doily, and this is just one that I cut apart uh, from, I think this was either a tablecloth or a bedspread. And I'm gluing this all the way around. And so then you're going to have that little bit of trim on the outside. Uh, the doily that I used on the other one was a larger doily than this. But I still had some trim showing. And you just glue this in really well. And that's going to keep you from having to stuff your whole uh, container and it's also going to dress up the outer edge of it. So I'm just gluing this all around. And then I wanted to show you guys how is the easiest way that I've found to make a little pin cushion. And what I do is I just take, I cut this, the tip off of the toe off of a sock. And then I stuff that with, uh, with some polyfill. And you don't need very much at all because these are stretchy. So um, I fill this with some polyfill and you don't have to use a whole lot. You don't need a whole lot of polyfill to make a little pin cushion. So I just stuff that in and then I tie um, a string around it. But I wanted to dress this one up more than just that sock showing, obviously. So I stretched some lace over the sock before I tied it closed. And then I tr trimmed off all the excess of the sock and the lace. And then, uh, then I can glue it into this. And as I glue this, I'm pushing it down and holding it to make sure that that glue holds before I turn it loose. Because I don't want this popping up too much, if that makes sense. Uh, it just has a neater finish if you just really push it down there as you're gluing it. And that will secure those edges really well. And uh, this is just a very, very simple way to make a pincushion out of just about anything. And then I just took some vintage lace and tied around the top just underneath that the lip. And... Uh, and tied a bow around it, and then that's all that I did to this one. And this made a, a, a very neat little um, pincushion, and I love the neutral colors on this one, so I'm glad that I had to go out and find another one because I really like how this one turned out. And then I wanted to do one more item in this little vignette. So uh, I just found two books that I was okay with the color of. I just wanted kind of neutral colors uh, that were in this rice paper here that I'm going to add to it. So um, I just glued these two together. Um, I'm not going to make this one very freely. I just want to do this one so that it can be used as a little riser for that area. So this is some rice paper that I used part of uh, at one point, and I'm just tearing part of it off and gluing it on both the front and the back. And I like to tear the raw edges that are gonna be showing because I just think it has a lot uh, more natural look and uh, and it kind of blends in a little more, even though, you know, you're going to obviously see where these ends are, but it, it has a neat look when you tear it. So um, I'm gluing it to one part of the front, and then I'll glue some on the back. 
and then I'm going to do something to dress up that spine as well. And for the spine, I cut a strip of muslin fabric for each of these books. And then I'm going to do some stamping on it and, um, and glue that to each of the spines. And because I've already at attached these two together, I should have waited on that part actually. But because I did already, uh, the part that is there at the seam of those two books... Uh, where they meet. I'm just going to kind of stuff that back in. Now, many of my stamps I have thrifted or else I've had them so long that you probably can't even find them anymore. Uh, but I have people ask about my scripture stamps all the time. And uh, although I get some of those from Amazon still and some from Hobby Lobby, um, I'm going to just link several of the scripture stamps from Amazon so that if you're looking for some, you'll have an assortment to, to get. And the, the transfer that I decided to use here, um, I had planned on just stamping, but I forgot I added a, a little bit of a transfer. And this is from the set Birds and Blooms from Dixie Bell, and it's just a small set. For those of you who were wondering where my video was on Tuesday, uh, the one that I posted as an extra was actually supposed to be posted on Tuesday, but for some reason when I went to post it, uh, I did something wrong and it um, immediately posted. So I didn't want to take that off. So that was supposed to be Tuesday's video. So that's why it's been a little bit of a stretch since I've, since I've put one out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.